At this time, we're going to give our presentation for the West Virginia trip that we took. Uh, before we get started, uh, the ones that are sitting up front and myself included are the ones that actually took the trip. But we really could not do it without all the support of the church, uh, some local businesses, uh, and all the donations that we receive. Uh, our truck driver is not with us here this morning, but he deserves much praise for what we put him through <laughs> time and time again, and yet he's willing to step up and take the punishment again. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about that as we go through our presentation, but truly, we that go get to experience the things firsthand. And a lot of you that donate and do so much to support us, you're really missing out by not going with. And I invite anybody and everybody to come with. It's not that far away. Uh, it's a long weekend. We do do a lot of work, but it's very rewarding as well. And if you talk to any of us that have gone, it is an absolutely blessing to go and to, to be God's hands and feet. Uh, and I hope that that's what you're able to see through the pictures and stuff that we share, that you would be able to see that as well. And truly, I am very grateful for all the prayers and everything else that you guys give for us uh, as we make this trip. Uh, I believe, uh, and actually as we go through these pictures, I'm going to see them for the first time as you see them as well. Uh, I kind of put a little bit of an order here of some other ones they're going to share as well. I think some of them are going to just share from where they're seated. Uh, and then we're going to uh, share with the pictures as well. Uh, I believe Tanya is going to share uh, as far as the initial call that she had made with uh, Rick and Mary that we went to this time. Well, when we talked about going, I made a bunch of phone calls. And not just me. I, we found a place to stay, so we called the new people to find out how many people could fit in their houses. And they were so overwhelming, blessing. They said about that, that we can stay at their missions if we needed to. They would put cots up for us to stay in. Um, but coming up to the trip, uh, we made calls, and we weren't sure if we were going to go. But they prayed that we would not cancel our trip. And then when we got down, I called them and said we were about 45 minutes to a half an hour away. They prayed that we were going to run late. And then we got to meet them in person, which was a bigger blessing besides talking to them on the phone. Everything leading up to this trip this time, this is our fourth time of going to this area of West Virginia, and it's our third different mission that we have gone to. Uh, and this time was not planned to go somewhere else. It actually got changed by the reservations that we made. We rented a house from somebody that has a mission in West Virginia and wore West Virginia, which is where we ended up going. Uh, we had all intentions of going to, back to Pastor Ricky's church and putting a handicap ramp into the church. Uh, there was double booking. He was booking through me to arrange it. His wife was arranging another group to come, and neither one of them had correlated together. So when I called him back and said, yes, this is the definite week that we're coming, uh, a couple days later, I got a message that he was so sorry and whether we could change our time and it did not work to change. So we ended up going to Rick and Mary as well, which is very confusing because it's Rick and Mary at the church and Rick and Mary that we went to in war, West Virginia. Uh, Rick and Mary in war, are actually from Ohio, and they are much more organized. They, they do not function like West Virginia people do. So that part of the trip was a great blessing. Uh, down there, the other ones that we have 
met with and dealt with, organization is lacking greatly. Uh, Rick and Mary actually gave us a schedule of things to happen, which was like very shocking. Uh, so anyhow, uh, and then Kim wants to share a little bit about our ride into the mission. Uh, and then I think we'll get started with the, the pictures. It was just a little bit of a hairy, scary ride this time. No flat tires, thank the Lord. But uh, when you're going down War Mountain, there's probably close to 150 or more switchbacks. I might be exaggerating. But uh, it was Jeff and I and April and Janessa in the Jeep. And at one point, I couldn't even look. I had my hands over my eyes because April was going, oh, no, oh, no. At that point, the, the back tires of the tractor trailer were not even on the ground. They were up in the air as the tractor trailer was making the turn, taking up both lanes. So needless to say, till we got to war, April and I were mentally exhausted. I don't know about Tanya, but we were mentally exhausted. Yeah, Dale is amazing that he is willing to do what he is. Uh, when we went through some of those switchbacks, his trailer was off the road on the right-hand side and his tractor was off the road on the left-hand side going around the corner, okay? That's how tight these corners are. They are not designed for a tractor trailer. Uh, and it's up and down hills and around and everything like that. And uh, every time we've taken them, he's willing to go again. <laughs> He looks forward to it. Uh, he probably would have been here today, but they are tractor pulling, uh, I believe, in Virginia. So, uh, but he is definitely a very blessing. Uh, it's a great opportunity to be able to share and to go with him as well. Uh, all right, I believe we'll start with the pictures. If somebody would like to... Turn the lights out might be a little bit easier, and then uh, I'll see what we got here, and we'll. All right, so this is before we even go. Uh, we get a lot of food boxes donated by uh, Wangers over in Mifflinburg. And we go through and we sort and organize that food so that we are able to handle it a little bit better and know what we have. So this was the Saturday before we leave. Uh, we all gather together and go through all the boxes. Uh, a lot of them are dented and stuff, and sometimes the package actually opens, so we get rid of that stuff a while beforehand. Uh, Fremont Automotive lets us park up there and use their forklift which makes it a lot easier getting all those skids in and out of the trailer uh, because we fill the tractor trailer from front to back. Uh, and I'm glad we don't have to pick it all up. Uh, this is on the way in. Uh, after we had already gone across a bridge that Dale shouldn't have been on, that we found out as we made a turn that he was not supposed to be on that road. So we got to this point, though, the truck was allowed to be on the road, but then there was road construction ahead down to one lane that was only eight foot wide. And then the sign said, trucks use alternate route than the detour, because the detour only had an 11.6 height or something like that. So there we are on an intersection that we can't go back the way we came because we came across a bridge that we shouldn't have been on the first time. We can't take the detour because we're too tall. And there was a road to the right and Dale pulled out his trucker atlas and it said he was allowed to be on it, so we did take it. At this point, we are 11 miles away from where we were going. And we ended up at that point probably going 15 miles in the wrong direction to come back those miles to get to <laughs> where we were. Uh, we also came across a low underpass that 
it was good he had air rides so he could dump his airbags because I don't think he would have made it otherwise. And then I'm not sure where we were going. <laughs> so we still had a very good adventure getting in. Uh, and here's where we went, the city of war. Uh, we kind of asked why would anybody name their city war? But I will say this, it has to do with a long time ago, but right now they are really dealing with a spiritual war. They have a spiritual war and a drug war that is going on daily down there. Uh, it is definitely a war. There's a tractor trailer backed into the mission to get unloaded the first day. Uh, and once again, they were surprised. They really did not think we were bringing a tractor trailer of food. I don't know why people don't believe us when we tell them we are bringing you a tractor trailer of stuff, have place to put it. They once again thought, no, they're just talking about a straight truck. It's not gonna be a tractor trailer. And you pull in and they're like, oh, I guess they did mean a tractor trailer. <laughs> and then we get to unload that whole tractor trailer by hand. Uh, are you sharing about unloading or are you want? You had it marked down, you were, so. Uh, so we had some fresh fruit as well that we unloaded. And uh, actually standing with his back to us, that is Ricky uh, from the missions down there. Uh, And little Matt helping to pull the pallet jack around. At least we did have that to pull the pallets to the back. Uh, I think so, most of them were a lot heavier than Matt, though. Yeah. <laughs> yep, our truck driver is this guy right here. Uh, he also helps us unload. And then he ends up uh, heading out. Uh, he did not. He was not able to stay once again, he talks about staying, but it has not worked out for him yet. Janessa inside, unloading. And Dale heading out to go home. All right, this is where I wanted to jump in. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> After we were done unloading um, the trailer, um, Mary said she wanted to pack some stuff up to um, a lady named Nan. And when they say pack, that is you fill your stuff and you carry it across the railroad tracks up to the houses. They do not have way to drive vehicles to Nan's house. So Nate and Veronica and I and Mary, we grabbed some food and we packed it up to her. And while we were there, we found out that Nan um, was going the next morning for an um, appointment. She is having issues with her heart. And from talking, we found out that she was having the issue that Keith Spiegelmeyer was having um, with his heart. So we were able to give her words of encouragement, and um, we had prayer with her, and it was quite... Um, not what we were expecting. We weren't expecting to go um, and just impromptu having prayer. And um, I think we were all blessed by her um, as well. All right. This here is the day that we actually handed out the food, which was the next morning after we had got down there. Uh, one thing that was nice this time, we did not handle everything 10 times. When we unloaded the tractor trailer, we actually put it on the other two trailers that we took up to the food distribution. So we did have a lot less uh, handling of stuff compared to other times. They did a drive through. We got boxes ready and gave everybody a box of the different things accordingly to their family and how many were with. Uh, so we had skids of water as well. So we gave everybody, I think it was two things of water. Uh, we split up the fresh produce and a lot of the canned food and stuff like that. 
Uh, one of the canned foods that we took that were donated, uh, Janessa is going to share about that they really like this stuff, and we'll see what Janessa has to share about it. Uh, There, you can talk into that, and then they can hear you. So when we were packing the trailer, Kim said Dad should eat some manwich. So Dad found pot of meat and said Kim needed it. So we kept teasing her she was going to try it. So we were at the dollar store and we saw potted meat. So we got some. We put it in a basket Kim wanted. So then one night, Albert told dad that treat meat is good and we should try some. So we went back to the dollar store and got treat meat. So the night before we left, Kim, me, Veronica, Nate, Dad, Jasmine, and Abby tried potted meat and treat meat. I liked it, but I don't think anyone else liked it. <laughs> it was good on crackers. Some had it on pretzels. So if you see it at the store, get some, try it, and let me know. <laughs> I think the stuff is nasty. <laughs> but if you like a hot dog, the potted meat is basically like a hot dog without a casing. But I don't like hot dogs, so it made it all the worse. And it, I think both of them are very salty. Uh, but down there, they think it's great. Albert, which I think we probably have some pictures of and we'll talk about, but he just talked so great about this treat meat and... Uh, he told me I could try it, and even if I didn't really like it, he was still going to like it because he really thought it was good, and he can have it. I won't be buying And actually, we had trouble finding it. We had to go to two stores to get treat meat. I thought, this stuff should really be good. Well, I wouldn't waste my time ever buying it. And the store they said not from Yeah, when I asked the lady, where do you find treat meat at? She says, you're not from around here, are you? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a big thing for them to be able to get treat meat. It is not a treat. <laughs> they should really try some real meat. And it tastes nothing like spam, like I thought. Yeah, it kind of looks like spam, but it does not really taste like spam, but... All right, and uh, this lady here with her back and here, these are some ladies that helped down there with Rick and Mary at the mission as well, uh, and they were helping us get things ready. Uh, so we, we handed it out. It was a drive-through food distribution. We handed out a lot of food that day, uh, separating the produce to be able to give each one of them. This was the line of vehicles that started to form before we even got there with the food. Uh, so it was, it was definitely an uh, interesting and different experience. We went through, uh, and then they actually went. There was 183 families, they said, that went through. Okay, it was line. 183 families that we served that went through that day and it was from 11 to two, something like that, 11 to one. So it was constant vehicle right after vehicle. You didn't have to wait for somebody to come. And then they also took food and delivered it to the houses. Uh, Rick loaded up some different ones and they took, uh, I 
think most everybody went to the different houses, I think, except some of us guys are just... I thought some of you went the next day. Oh, okay. All right, so some of them went and delivered food to the houses. Do any of you want to share anything? While um, Veronica, Matthew, and I were um, delivering, we went to um, a house, and there was an old man. He was sitting out um, waiting for, uh, I think he just watches the traffic go by. Um, and he said to Rick, he said, did you check with Mary? Does she have an ironing board at the mission? And he's like, I didn't ask. And he goes, well, will you remember to ask? And Rick's like, yeah, I'll remember to ask. And I could tell it wasn't top on Rick's mind. So that evening we went to the Dollar General and we bought this man an ironing board. He loves to iron. That's what he, that's what he likes to do. So he broke his ironing board, so we went and bought him a new one. And as you can see, the houses that they went to deliver to are not the nicest of houses or living in campers. This is actually the uh, a new beginning is the mission that we went to. Uh, they actually redid those two buildings that are side by side. They're actually owned by uh, the borough. Uh, the town actually owns them and they rent them now that they've renovated them. We should really have some pictures of what it looked like before they touched it and fixed it all up and got it ready. Uh, you guys have some pictures inside? Okay. This is the inside of it. They've kind of turned it into like a little coffee house. They serve meals there. They are not allowed to right now because of the COVID. They're shut down as far as that part. Uh, they have quite a collection of guitars on the wall and a set of drums. There is Albert sitting there. Uh, he, I'm not sure I forget how old he is, but when he was a child, his mother shook him and he has baby uh, shaken syndrome. Uh, so he does, he is legally blind here in October, Rick and Mary are taking him to see a specialist to see if they can do anything for his eyes. Uh, so that is coming up. Uh, he's, he's a very interesting guy. He was fun to, to joke around with. Uh, we took, it was a skid of muscle milk. And he kept saying about how he didn't need no muscle milk. He had enough muscles, but Rick probably did need some muscle milk. And when I would see him in the morning, I asked him if him and Rick were going to get their muscle milk to start the day off and stuff. And I uh, had a good time uh, with him there and stuff like that. Uh, but even though he is legally blind, uh, he shoots a lot of baskets and he has a 78% average at the three-point line, uh, which is pretty amazing for somebody that is blind. Uh, but he has an arm on him. He doesn't look like it, but he can throw a basketball from one end of the court to the other and be accurate. And if you don't think that's much, just try that sometime with a basketball and just try and throw it from one end to the other, let alone being close to the basket. It takes a lot to throw a basketball that far. Uh, and he was doing it while we were handing out food quite a bit. Uh, one of the things through COVID, Rick and Mary now uh, have an apartment that Albert stays in. He was in not the greatest situation before that. He spent a lot of time out on the streets. Uh, and Rick and Mary have kind of taken him in, and he lives in their apartment, and wherever they go, they take Albert with them as well. Uh, so it has really worked out well. Just some other pictures from inside their facility. Matt playing the drums. And Janessa, I think, just sitting at the drums. You were playing, I don't see the drumsticks, so I wasn't sure. Uh, here uh, in the morning, the 
Third morning, I guess it was, we sorted some clothes to do a clothing give out. And some of the food and stuff that was left over. And they just did the clothing handout on the street. And this lady here is Mary. Uh, so she helped them do the clothing giveaway. And Tanya. Before we did the clothing giveaway, a few of us got to witness a lady named Gail accept Jesus into our heart. That was a great day. Mary had a special way with her words with Gail, too. And that night before bed, when Matt, got, after he got out of the shower, he was excited to see, because he was one of the kids that got to witness it, and he was excited to see that the lady accepted Jesus into her heart. So it was a big blessing for me that day. You will notice um, that sign actually said slow funeral. Um, somebody ran over our sign and took our um, advertisement with it. So we were slow funeral. <laughs> Here, they're, they're helping um, some girls try on shoes that were available and donated. Um, a lady picked out this big teddy bear and was afraid to let it down, so Scotty held on to it so nobody walked off with it. Um, here, we're helping these girls find some clothing in the right sizes. We had it in organized by gender, um, children's adults, but not necessarily by size. And they had found the stuffed animal box, so they stocked up on stuffed animals. We also took, well, I'll let Kim hear. The day that we, <laughs> Excuse me, the day we were sorting clothes, Mary had made mention that Danny, this gentleman here, needed a new pair of shoes. Well, we didn't take a whole lot of clothing with us. And lo and behold, there was one pair of shoes in the bag. However, Danny needed a size 10 shoe. The shoes that we found were a size eight and a half. So Mary had him come into the mission. She said, let's just try them on. He slipped his foot right into the shoes. They fit him perfect. These people don't always get new shoes, so they have no idea what size shoes they even wear. And this pair of Skechers, you would have thought this man won a million dollars. He was so happy. There's his new shoes. We took along a stove, um, a dryer, and a queen size bed. And what they did was they had people that were in need of those items um, write a name and a phone number on a slip of paper and what they were interested in. And they put it in a drawing, and Matthew was pulling out for the winners. I think Matt wants to share something. I see his hand up, anyhow. It was fun, he said. And they stopped at the fire station, and uh, they had a Dalmatian there at the fire station. This here is the house that we went to work at. Uh, we we made a bedroom into the in the living room so that their son and daughter would no longer have to share a bedroom. It was not very big. It was 10 foot long and five, six wide. That was the new bedroom. The old bedroom wasn't much different. <laughs> it was about the same. Uh, 
And actually, when we got there, uh, they had a completely different idea of what we were going to do. I'm glad that through circumstances, we were able to change their mind uh, and make it a little bit better. Uh, but we framed it out, hung drywall, uh, mudded it, painted it. Jasmine, Veronica, you going to share a little bit? On this day, we were, um, it rained, and their porch um, leaked. <laughs> so we had to try to paint inside, in the yeah. kitchen, and on the back porch. So these girls had a rough time trying to do a nice job. And the, and, uh, the boy that we uh, were making this room for, he picked out the paint. And he was helping, too, as well as the little girl that kind of uh, Wayne got a, uh, was really attached to. Or, or, yeah. But uh, when we wanted to do this room, they, they had a different, uh, they wanted it back in the corner and a little hallway that just wouldn't work. So we drawed it out and tried to show them um, that. If we build it this way, they're going to have like a two-foot hallway, and how are they going to take furniture back into the little girl's room? Or so when uh, we, you know, rearranged it, it just it just fit much better, and it was a little easier to do. Other than the, when we went to get all the supplies, um, we decided not to go to Lowe's. We went to where. This lady worked, a little hardware store. And of course, I didn't have 10-foot drywall, so we had to use 8-foot, which caused a little more work, but that was fine. And it was just a, a blessing to do. And, uh, you know, you could see their eyes light up, you know, especially the little boy, which was a very intelligent young man. And it was just, it was just a blessing. And Scotty came out the second day when we were doing drywall, and he helped hold as we were cutting and getting the drywall ready. Uh, while a lot of the other stuff went on, actually right after the food distribution, uh, Jeff, Nate, and I, we went out to try and get an idea of what we were getting into uh, because of not being there. And they told us one thing, and when we got there, like we said, we kind of changed things around. We had an extra window there that went into the kitchen that we closed off, gave them a little shelf. It was not very much room even to work in there. It made it very difficult to even just maneuver around everybody and everything uh, to be able to get the job done. And you can see uh, after the drywall and stuff is on, it's not very big, not a lot of room. They painted the door for his room, and we also replaced the door on the girls' room. Uh, Veronica was hoping... Uh, my battery went dead in this. I'm going to run this back, see if they have another battery. Uh, she was hoping that they would have a picture of the door that we took out of the house for the little girl. And uh, it actually had like a little wooden dowel that you would slide through a hole in the door to latch it closed. There was no doorknob or anything like that. It was like a little wooden dowel that you would slide over and be able to swing the door in and out. Uh, and it was, it was in really rough shape. Uh, so we ended up replacing her door for her bedroom and then putting the others in as well. Uh, we did not, we were not able to do probably as good of a job as we would have liked to with the drywall and stuff because it did not dry. When it's raining, the mud just would not dry. We had him put a second coat on while we weren't there. And the next day, even there was spots that were not completely dry. But when you're limited on time, 
you basically do what you can, but it still looked a lot better than what was around it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, they were they were just happy to have a new room uh, so that they could be separated, uh, the the son and daughter. We put carpet down in the room for them as well. I don't know what you did, but it it died already. Oh, and I pushed it a bunch of times. When with talking with Melinda, which is the mom for the boy and girl, Ethan and Alyssa, um, they had a queen size bed that they were going to put in the little girl's room. And she made a comment that she would like to have a twin size bed for the little girl for in her bedroom. Well, we did some research. We found a twin size bed. Nate and I went to go get it. And the lady wouldn't take our money for the bed. She said, consider it my donation for on your trip. So we were able to provide the little girl with a twin size bed. Well, while they're trying to figure that out, Sandy, I know you want to share some, so how about you share, because our slides aren't going, so that way we can keep going. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, um, one thing I did, I wanted to share with the guitar picture, first of all. Um, uh, Mary was telling me a story about when, <clears throat> excuse me, um, when they were praying about instruments for the mission. And so they were praying for guitars and, and things like that. And there was a lady that came in and said that they were having, um, I think it was like an auction or something uh, down the road, and they had this guitar there. And she said um, what they were doing was, I guess they were like doing um, a drawing for it, and they were putting their name in. And so this lady comes into Mary and she says, I am putting um, my name in for this guitar. And she said, we're going to put it in, in Jesus's name. And so when she went and filled out this ticket for the drawing, she just put on Jesus. And so when they did the drawing, it was Jesus's uh, ticket that was drawn. So it was literally in Jesus's name that they got this guitar. So they thought that was, that was pretty cool. So um, I wasn't sure what I was going to share for this, um, but as I was praying, um, God just kind of gave me some words to share. Um, I had a person ask me, uh, why do you go on these mission trips and feed those that are drug addicted and, and don't work? Because it says in... Second Thessalonians, if a man will not work, he shall not eat. My reply was, and it went along with the song this morning, Matthew 25, where Jesus says, whatever you do, do for the least of these. Brothers and sisters, you did for me. <clears throat> as, as we do not, yeah, I'm sorry. As we, I'm sorry, I have it written down here. <laughs> I have to read my writing. Um, are we not to do what Jesus tells us to do? If we do not go and tell these people about Jesus and help them, how will they come to the Lord? The day we had the food giveaway, I had the privilege to go with Rick out to some of the hollers 
and deliver some of the food that the people couldn't get into. And you saw some of the houses that these people live in, and it is just unbelievable. Um, but as we were doing that, I was able to talk to Rick, and I was asking him some different questions about um, how they got there and, and things like that, and um, about these people. And he was telling me about their ministry and how they got there, about the people that were in town. One of the things he told me was most of the people in that town, which is about close to 800 people, lived there their entire lives, never traveling outside of the area. So that's all they know. They think that everyone lives the way they do. So if they think that, if they think that, how are they going to know any different unless we, as God's people, go and tell them? This trip for me was a God trip. My first or second week of being here, they were talking about the trip. God said, you're going to West Virginia. I didn't know anyone that was going, but God said go, so I went. Letting God be in complete control of my life and letting the Holy Spirit guide me is beyond peace I'd ever known. So that was a way I connected with Rick and Mary. They live by the Holy Spirit. They believe in the power of prayer. They are there because God guiding, guided them there. They are very loving and kind people, helping so many on what God provides. When I said I knew no one that was going on this trip, that soon changed. We had a lot of fellowship time, and I got to know this group well, and I'd be happy to go again if God says go. Thank you so much for allowing me to go along and experience what God is doing. All right. There's all the children in the room. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the boy that we did the room for, and this is his sister here. Uh, and they helped us out throughout the time, and I did. I had a good time picking on uh, Alyssa as we were there uh, and trying to do more than just give them a room, but to also encourage them that there is better out there than a lot what they see. We also gave them a bunch of different gifts and things like that, some school backpacks and supplies. Uh, we went on a picnic, and while we were bringing them back, uh, the boy had shared how things in war just keep getting worse and worse. And I shared with him, I said, you know, you're the generation that can change that. That's what it takes, is somebody to change that, because it doesn't have to be worse and worse. But it takes somebody and different people to stand up and say, I'm not going to follow those same trends. The scripture that I read, Solomon wrote how the sun just keeps repeating. The cycle of life just keeps repeating. What happens there in war West Virginia just keeps repeating. The drug addiction continues from one generation to a next. They shared with us about a young man that was like 13 or 14 and asked his mom, can, you, can I get high with you? Yeah, sure. And shoots him up with heroin. Can you imagine that? A child at 13 or 14 and saying to mom, hey, can I get high? How about I get high with you? And the mom saying, oh yeah, sure, here we go. It's a family tradition. You know, and it pretty well is. And a lot of times... We look at it from the outside and we say, you know, they make those choices. Yeah, they do, but so many of them see no other choice. They don't know anything different. It's all they see. It's all they know. They've said to different ones that, why don't you get out of here? And they'll say, well, why? Everything else is just the same. This is how life is. They don't know a normal family. They know people that get drunk and get high on a daily basis, and that's how you live life. 
There is no, no difference. It doesn't change. And that's why I read that scripture this morning, because you know what? If we look at just things of the world, it doesn't change. It's when we look at Jesus Christ that we can have change in our own lives and we can have change in a community like war and be able to make a difference by being able to go and support people like Rick and Mary that have literally packed up and moved away. Uh, and they have been attacked by the devil for what they are doing time and time again. You know, and a lot of times it would be easy to just throw up your hands and say, I've had enough, but yet they continue to stay there. Uh, and when they went, they had no intentions of staying. They had intentions of getting this going and they were planning on going back to Ohio and they're still there seven years, seven years now that they've been there. That takes a, a great calling and willingness to go and do. They took us for a picnic. They have a lake. Uh, they're close by war. It was a nice little area there. Uh, and we just had a good time of fellowship. We did have more fellowship time this time than we did other times because we were right there. Other times we drove back and forth an hour or more just to get from where we were staying to where we were working. And this time we were right in town of where we were doing all these different things at. Uh, and this is a picture of Albert. Uh, and we all, we all enjoyed spending time with Albert and all of them. I would say one thing about Rick and Mary, uh, meeting them one time, it felt like friends that you have known for a long time. They really did. They just felt like that kind of a person you could just sit down and spend the rest of the day with, and it was like catching up instead of getting to know them. We did do a little fishing with some hooks that we found there. Uh, okay, go ahead. Ethan was talking to me at the picnic, and he said that Steve Harvey, the billionaire, had grew up in Welch. Which is like 15 miles from war. Okay, which is 15 miles from war. All right. It was fun fishing. <laughs> They had a good time being able to actually enjoy. We also played horseshoes uh, with a lady that was down there and uh, she talked kind of like she was the state champ or the fair champ or something like that. Uh, and her record still stands as far as for us. <laughs> but it was a very pretty lake that we were able to go. Too. And then Sunday morning, we had a church service there before we hit the road. Uh, okay, Jasmine wants to... Okay, so Ethan and them have, like, never tried Meadowsworth chips before. And so we got them, like, a whole box of the little 25-cent chips, and he said they were the best chips that he has ever had. <laughs> So Rick and Mary and Albert, they came to our church service there in the morning. Uh, there is a lot of churches down there. Uh, and they said basically what it is, is one family member is still the pastor. And there's about four or five other family members that come to hear them. They have very little to do with the community and stuff like that. They're kind of all by them. Each church is by itself and it's just a little family type thing. And uh, that's the end of our pictures. Uh, Scotty, did you want to share anything? What blessed me the most of the trip is when we did the food clothing giveaway. And to see those poor people receive what we have given them is such a blessing. And while we were down there, one of the amazing things that I thought uh, we were unloading the produce, and they were in some Ritter feed bags. And 
Uh, Mary, I think it was, said, I want to take a picture of that. I want to take a picture of that. I want to send it to uh, this couple that's on the board. And like, okay, you're going to take pictures of Ritter feed bags. What? Well, why? Well, we found out that Tom and Bernie, which are on their board for a new beginning, they live in McClure. Wow. Now, what is the chances of that? Uh, I don't, do you know what their last name is? Arnold. It's Tom and Bernie Arnold. Uh, Tom is a logger, so I don't know if you know him, Pete, or not. Uh, but yeah, so it was quite interesting to be able to go all the way down to West Virginia, meet new people that uh, we've never met before, and yet two people that sit on their board are practically our neighbors over in McClure. Uh, so that was very interesting to be able to go and experience. And I think, Tanya, did you want to share as far as an update? And then... Um, I still live in, in touch with Rick and Mary, and also Melinda, which is the lady um, that they did the room for. They are so thankful. And um, Melinda's thankful that the kids are happy. They finally got the beds and stuff, and they were excited to have them. <coughs> also, uh, Rick and Mary are doing very well. They've been in touch with us and well, just loved us like we're family. And it was just a big joy to still be able to talk to them. Also, they've been filling up um, blessing boxes with the food that we've taken down to bless the people that live on the streets. And they come and help themselves with some of the food that are there. Yeah, and, they well. also, and they also had taken a trailer load to the other Rick and Mary, also. All right. I think that takes I, care of... Oh, I have one more thing one more to say. Thing. Um, the importance of prayer. Um, we felt your prayers on the way home. Um, or I don't even know where we were anymore. But we're moving at a decent rate of speed. And the next thing I know, the Jeep is dying. Like, we are losing speed. We're in a construction zone. Um, Jeff pulls in between the cones, gets us in, and they're looking around. We were the tail, so the other ones were still going in front of us. I'm messaging. I have no idea if they have stopped or not. Um, but before we left down there, I put, we are PA bound. A prayer is appreciated. And they got out, they looked at the Jeep, it started up, we started back home. And I had gotten on Facebook, and I seen that at the exact time we were stopped, that Donna Delancey had put that she was praying for us. Now this had been three or four hours later, but she had put praying, and it was the exact time that we were stopped. We were able to make it the rest of the way home without any trouble. So prayer is a very important, and I appreciate and coveted all of your prayers. So we did have a wonderful trip. It was definitely very rewarding, and we will be going again. We have not set a date or anything like that, but please feel free, anybody that is interested in going with uh, you might be sitting there and being like, oh, well, there's not much I can do. I'll just be in the way. We'll find something for you to do, I'll guarantee you. Um, and you will be blessed and glad that you went when you come back home. Uh, nobody that has gone will come back and say, boy, I wish I didn't go, I didn't spend that time. Uh, everybody that has ever gone are ready ready for the next time a lot of people as soon as we get back when are we going again you know and it is it's a great blessing so i would encourage any of you to be in prayer about it and the next time that we schedule to go down hopefully we'll take an even bigger group down uh, we were kind of long-winded we had pictures to share the good thing is we have food over in the fellowship hall afterwards here so you don't have to run off I think they planned it that way so that we could be a little bit longer and you didn't have to worry about lunch at home. Uh, so I'm going to pray for to be dismissed, and I'll also pray over the food 
so you don't have to wait for anybody to get back there and do that. You can go back and get in line and start getting a plate full of food as well. So, Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this trip that we were able to go, Lord. I pray that it would bring honor and glory to you. Lord, that it would be a blessing to each and every hands that had had a part in it through all the donations and time and things that were given. Lord, I ask that you would bless each one of those individuals, Lord. Lord, there was just a handful of us that went and we were able to receive such a blessing as we went and were able to give and see the joy in people's uh, eyes as far as receiving these things. And Lord, I just pray that they would realize that it is all from you and that you get all the honor and glory for Thank you for the support of prayers that we had from individuals here from the church and outside of the church. Lord, I just thank you for all your many blessings. Lord, as we go to prepare to have a meal now, Lord, I just ask that you would bless the hands that prepared the food. And that you would just be with each and every one of us. Be with the time of fellowship that we have and bless it. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.